Uh, I hold a, a pretty senior position um, in the information technology department at Cardinal Health, which is a Fortune 20 healthcare company just up the road in, in Dublin, Ohio. Um, like many large corporations in uh, the country today, we have a number of diversity programs targeted at uh, increasing our diversity, primarily at leadership levels. And, and one of the ones that's been around the longest is one called Women Leading Change. I'd say that's been around for probably, you know, maybe even 10 years. Um, about two years ago, that group made a decision, which I understand was a very emotional decision, to say to really, they weren't satisfied with the change they were seeing, and they decided to really increase the pace and affect meaningful change. They couldn't exclude 50% of the population, um, and to be frank, probably 80% of the company's leadership, which is men. And that's where Partners Leading Change was born. I was one of the first men, uh, first group of men that was asked to go through the Partners Leading Change program. And to be honest, when I was asked to go through it, as I was going through it, and when I was done going through it, I really sort of was saying to myself, you know, I, I don't need this. I'm not sure why I need this. I've never called any of my female coworkers honey. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I have this great wife that um, has a master's degree who's worked, you know, through the course of our marriage. I, I have three great daughters. When we sit down for Thanksgiving, we're joined by my sister-in-law, my mother-in-law, my two nieces. So at eight to one, you can imagine I get a fair amount of feedback on, uh, <laughs> on, uh, on women's issues. Um, but on a more serious note, um, in the, probably in the 13 of the 15 years I've been in Cardinal, I've actually had a female supervisor. So we've had a, a female CIO my entire career at Cardinal Health, which isn't just rare because it's a leadership position and it's a woman. It's, rare, it's rarer because it's, it's IT and it's technology. So anyways, we, I get through Partners Leading Change and, and my supervisor, um, Patty, says, gives, it often, often suggests to myself and my peers that we should be promoting more women. Um, and, and my thought on that, as, as I really thought through it, was we don't have a promotion problem, we have a hiring problem. So when it, you, know, you get to five, six, seven years, that's when you start to be considered for promotion into management, and, and, and so it goes. There are just fewer women to pick from. It doesn't matter how good they are compared to the men. There, there are just less of them. So I really started to think about, you know, why is that? And why did I not think that this was a problem? And, and a lot of it was because of my daughters. So, so with apologies to my uh, oldest daughter and my youngest daughter, I'm probably going to talk a bit more about uh, my middle daughter. But this is my oldest daughter, Gabby. Uh, Gabby played a lot of soccer growing up. Um, and at 5'4", in my completely unbiased opinion, she was one of the toughest players I ever saw play defense. Uh, when, uh, when it was time for her to go to school, to college, she decided she didn't want a typical college experience. She wanted something different. She applied to NYU. She got in. Her mom and I dropped her off last August, and we just picked her up. Um, she was the only kid um, from her graduating class to go there, middle of Manhattan, sort of no problem, so not afraid to take risks. This is my youngest daughter, Megan. Megan's just finishing up her, her, uh, her final year of middle school. Megan likes to ride horses, so on a regular basis, she guides an animal that weighs in excess of 1,000 pounds over a three to four foot fence. Fearless. I don't like to feed the horse, the, uh, the horse a carrot because I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid she might bite me. This is Paige. Paige plays the violin in the high school orchestra, but she doesn't just play in the orchestra. She competes in competitions, duets, quartets, occasionally solos. Again, just, just terrifying to me that I would be able to get up in front of a group of folks and have them judge my, my non-existent musical talent um, on a qualitative basis. She also plays water polo for the high school water polo team. And if you've never seen a water polo match, it's essentially hand-to-hand -hand combat in the water. Most of, it <laughs> most of it which occurs under the water where the refs can't see it. Um, so, so, so this is my sort of view on, on, on young women, fearless, competent, not afraid to compete, and really, I'm sort of thinking to myself, this problem is just going to solve itself um, as this generation takes over. Because it's not just my daughters, it's, it's their friends. They're all like this. So my wife and I are sitting around the kitchen table putting together Paige's uh, academic calendar for 10th grade, the, the year that she's just finishing. We're going through the course schedule, AP English. Sure. AP History. Check. I'll take that. Honors Geometry. Awkward silence. It was though I had made an off-color joke. Uh, 
So we get into this whole conversation. Gosh, I don't know if it's too hard. Are we loading the schedule up? I've heard, I won't say the teacher's name, Mr. So-and-so is, is, is really mean. Um, why didn't we have that conversation around the other honors classes? So I make an appointment to see the high school guidance counselor, who, who, I, who I really like. Um, I've worked with him some over the years with, with the kids. And we go through the class roster um, in, in our high school. Uh, we look at the AP physics class. I believe there were three young women in that class. We look at the computer science class. There was one, and I won't forget that one. Uh, we look at the honors math. More balanced, but probably still two-thirds men. So, so, so this sort of tells me, gosh, I'm, I'm on to something. And, and the problem is that this really carries over into career choices. So if you look at this, the, if you look at math, science, technology-related fields in the US, women are terribly underrepresented in those fields. And again, my belief is it's because they are choosing not to go into those fields of study. So in engineering and computer science related degrees across the country, only 17% of the population of those classes are young women. And the pity of that is, the shame of that is, if you look at the jobs that those can lead to, they're some of the most employed jobs in the country. If you look at starting salary, five of the top 10 starting salaries in the US today are math, science, or computer related fields. These are jobs that I'm sure, I don't have any sons, but I'm sure, remembering my father, um, that we are encouraging our sons to, uh, to go into. And for some reason, we're not encouraging our daughters to go, in, to go into those. So as I look back at that conversation, I say, what do I wish I had said to Paige? I wish I had said, look at what you've done. You're not afraid to compete. You're not afraid of hard work. You're tenacious. You can do this. It's just math. Everything you've done is probably harder than 10, 10th grade geometry. And, and she did decide to take the class, by the way. Um, what I would say to my wife and the guidance counselor and my boss and my peers and especially to myself is that this bias that girls are not good in math and science or worse yet, it's too hard for them is still out there and I don't know why. I don't know if Paige will pick a career in engineering and science, but I'd certainly like an environment where she can make that choice without bias. Thank you.